Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I would be in the forest right now, but it's almost sunset and it's gonna get really dark in there. So I'm trying to still stay alive, make some more videos for you guys. But I named this video Through the Looking Glass because of many connotations. Um, let's talk about the first. So I was talking about to Mr. Gillis recently and he mentioned to me a case study that he was researching about these Russian physicists and scientists in which they had a theory that if they created a curved mirror it would affect time they'd be able to essentially time travel or something of that nature and what they did was they they had created it right and it was a couple a few scientists apparently in the room and the main originator of it had felt this enormous dread of it now i am butchering the story the case study a little bit because i'm hearing it um i'm just retelling what i remember of of the story from mr gills but i'll have him on soon so that we can discuss it more um hopefully but he essentially feels this dread right the scientist the doctor or whatever he is and the one of the other scientist tells him to put a cross and I believe the entity or yeah whatever's causing that dread essentially adapts to it but it, it goes away the feeling goes away um, and then at some later point in time either it comes back or something of that nature but he ends up putting the symbol of peace in the mirror to potentially create this feeling of peace or to show that it's meaning peace forgot exactly their intentions right but this curved mirror right it's essentially a mirror and then it curves upon itself right and you have these infinite reflections or infinite dimensions one can theorize right so they put this symbol on it and i guess he wasn't totally aware of what he put in the first place from what i if i understand correctly because when he went then to check what type of symbol it was it was essentially a symbol of conjuring. So the entity in the mirror, right, in that dimension that he was dealing with, was using the scientist to conjure itself. So if you can imagine what that means, that idea to create this curved mirror, right, to look into the abyss, to look into these occult studies, to you know, deal with this type of experiment, was conjured into him by this entity so he thought he was the one doing the conjuring let's say right let's say let's say that that was his intent like a normal magician dealing with an entity he would think he's the one that wants to call it forth he's the one doing the conjuring but it's actually going both ways the entity was conjuring him while he was conjuring it and this phenomenon makes perfect sense if you think about the reality or the nature of this reality there is no observer without the observed and there is no observed without the observer right if we think of the quantum double slit experiment the wave turns into a particle when it's observed but it's still a wave until it's not observed right so the they are interconnected intertwined they can, everything is quantumly entangled this whole universe itself is right if we take it uh, you know as deep as we can we can potentially right now the reality we exist in cannot re exist without us right that we are intertwined this illusion is created by us which is also creating us right because we're in a feedback loop right that's why we come in here traumatized so that we create this traumatized or sustain this traumatized rea reality which then traumatizes us to then create this feedback loop of reincarnation right and we discussed about this prior in terms of the reincarnation feedback loop right that's how we potentially this cycle was created to begin with but let's let's get into you know some other ideas in terms of let's say more occult studies like astrology like numerology like tarot like magic whatever you want divination right these things if used to their full extent will ultimately lead to that curved mirror 
right? Because you are getting these thoughts to engage in them, right? You're receiving these thoughts. And then if not fully aware of what you're doing, will result in you conjuring them. And who is them, right? Whoever gave us these tools to begin with, right? Which from what we know in the Bible and various books, it was these fallen angels, right? The Titans, let's say, or the Olympians as well. Uh, I, you can likely contact both, right? Uh, so things like numerology, astrology, if, if you practice them in a way where you're completely unaware, let's say you're feeding your own ego, you essentially end up conjuring these beings. The energy is behind these beings up to the point where you start mad messing with, you know, things like magic squares, things like spells, and things start manifesting to you in ways that you didn't think were possible. And the same thing really happens to me with my readings, right? Essentially, everyone that comes to me is in a sense also being used to get to me, but I can also help them, right? If that makes sense, by, by giving them a reading, I am making myself vulnerable to their energies if I'm not aware, if I'm not careful. Okay, and you know, whatever is in the background manifesting themselves can then start, start to sort of infiltrate my own field. Um, but then again, I can also help them, right? So I, I, I'll see the script. I see that it's scripted, like, wow, this person is incredibly scripted. I've seen these patterns repeat before, but I can, they can get something from me if I just give them this report in a cautious way, right? So I can help them become more aware and that can potentially help the, their spirit come more to the surface. So something to really be careful with in terms of these occult studies, everything you really research, like I said, can affect you, can then intertwine with your energy and seep into it. Um, and then, you know, you begin calling in things to your life that seem to be out of the ordinary, right? Now to get even further, now the, the looking glass, right? The curved mirror, the mirror can also be considered a looking glass. I was listening recently to an SSP um, podcast, right? SSP Secret Space Program, which essentially is present here on Earth, right? And that deals with a lot of the Aryan stuff we're talking about, the Pleiadians, the off-world Germans that, let's say, let's say they actually won the World War, right? And they were able to re-engineer the technology that was given to them, All right? So they were contacted, essentially same thing with this mirror, contacted, and then able to take that to another level, right? Take that to further down the line, um, let's say back to Argentina or whatever it was, in which they were able to reconstruct uh, some of this stuff. And, you know, with Operation Paperclip, like, oh, the USA infiltrated, right, or things like that. No, it's likely that they were in, they were the ones infiltrated. And, you know, Giorgiani, Dr. Giorgiani has more information on that type of stuff, if you're interested, in which they're actually time travelers, right? Because remember, this curved mirror does affect time. It's because it's space, space time, it's extra dimensions are different in time, right? Time dilates differently there. That's why these secret space program people can take someone out, put them in the program for 20 years, have them do something contracted, um, bring them back, and it's like they did something, nothing ever happened because they're at the same point in time, maybe a few moments later, and they have their memories wiped, right? Now, I've heard this can go both ways. It can be, you know, free will contract, or it could be just something that they will forcibly contract you in or maybe you made some sort of contract prior to this life in which you were deceived into right or they'll just deceive you again something like that because you gotta remember the reality we exist in is contractual it's these contracts that need our agreement right they need us to go along with it they deceive us into it our life scripts contracts you can look down timelines so using this curved mirror this looking glass um you know, it's likely that they gain access to this technology. And um, 
have been using us using it against us um it's likely these uh off-world germans pladians Aryans, working under whatever this demiurge or whatever else is going on right it, you know, they're, they're trying to put us in in 5d right that, that's likely where they are that's where where they may have some operations from and earth is being used as some sort of containment zone it's likely one of their worlds even as well if they've been working with these dracos uh, because they sold out right these off-world germans maybe they sold out and maybe these pladians really are us from the future and they're using greys right the greys seem to be their minions i don't know i think it's another they're part of the structure hierarchy in some way in this demiurgic matrix i think but essentially you know they're able to to look through that looking glass right and see timelines down the future um they may be coming even from their own timelines in which they collapse think like loki right the, the timeline is divergent or whatever they called it in the show and they had to either destroy it so that it doesn't branch off and destroy all the other timelines right the master timeline uh, or they had to repair it in some way right and of course that sends some sort of butterfly effect or whatever to other things as well if they make too big of movements but uh, the secret space program thing is very interesting i'll look into that um much more because the way they use these things is uh, quite quite interesting and you know there's a lot to be there because i believe many of us are in these programs whether we know it or not you know if we don't recollect our dreams if we don't have knowledge of our past memories how can we truly know for sure and even with the after death phenomenon with the the moon and uh how it looks like a bright light the looking glass was described as the same bright light so when you come out of the system you go back through the looking glass because that's what they use to travel right so they can either use the looking glass to look down the timeline or they can insert themselves into this timeline or whatever timeline they choose with this looking glass potentially right and we see this with the, sh the the movie alice through the looking glass uh also known as alice in wonderland where initially in the book right she goes into a wormhole black hole which i've also described this reality as sort of black hole or you could be it could be anonymous to or analogous to um uh, the looking glass she in the movie she jumps in a looking glass and then apparently she's on, i haven't seen the movie about what i was reading because I'm like, isn't it also called Alex through the looking glass? Isn't there some sort of thing, connection to Alice? And yeah, it's a movie. And Alice would potentially be the Sophia spirit, right? Jumps in, lands on this checkerboard, which again, the Masons represent this reality as a checkerboard, right? It's duality. And she uh, ascends from pawn to queen, essentially, right? Escalates her status. And that's how we get this game of ascension, like Emily talks about, or this whole evolution idea that we're going through oh we're evolving like no our spirit never evolved it's this fake system this game that we're in right so in by looking through this glass right that we're able to to hop into this reality and then when we die you know we've seen that the moon is actually potentially reflecting this reality like a mirror right like a glass so the moon would be that first looking glass when you die you go through it but they own that you have to remember they have stations on the moon they have stations on mars or whatever on earth of course underground antarctica so you die in your astral body instead of returning to you know that your true self and the ineffable one instead you go through the moon that's how you get caught in the reincarnation trap again right that bright light it sucks you back in because that's one of their stations they, they own that looking glass and you meet them you go right to them right that's where they want you to go and of course they try to use voice of god technology and emotions and all sort of things to pull you in so the more i research the more i understand these sort of things because i mean the moon is obviously very funny it almost seems holographic uh if the story is true then they rang like a bell right some people claim to that it has a a metal 
interior, right? So it's definitely not natural, in my opinion. Um, and not to mention its reflective surface. It could be reflected, reflecting the, the true uh, size of Earth, right? All the continents rather than just what we're given, right? The seven continents that we know of. Maybe the lands beyond Antarctica, things like that. But essentially, that's just a map of this reality, of another, right, of this realm. And the other realms are beyond this moon, beyond, uh, you know, 3D. But again, it's still part of a matrix. So, you know, the more I learn, the more I, I will share with you guys. I'm always researching. And I love this type of stuff. Um, so you can count on some more videos for me. But if you enjoyed this one, give it a like. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.